You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Top of the fourth inning. BYU won Portland no score, and Easton Walker has been dealing. Deals strike one to the number three hitter, leadoff hitter in the fourth. The shortstop number two, Chad Stevens. Reached on a fielding error in the first and drills one to the wall and off the wall here in the fourth. It'll be a stand-up double for Chad Stevens. Yeah, and Hunter never saw that off the bat. He wouldn't have caught it anyways because it was midway up the wall. But uh, that, that sun is tough in left field right now. So double to left. Stevens has reached in both of his plate appearances. Again, the leader in every meaningful Portland offensive category has himself in scoring position. Runner on second and none out. The second hit for Portland tonight. Jay Colcroft a single in the third. Stevens a double here in the fourth. As the Pilots were hitless through two. Runner in scoring position to whom Easton Walker glances back. And that's ripped down the first baseline. Bobbled by the right fielder. The hitter will end up at second, and the runner from second will come home to score. Chad Stevens ties the game at one on the double down the right field line by Ben Pataskal. And a bit of a bobble in right field. He gets to second easily. Yeah, not, that ball was that ball was smoked. I can't. I got to see the replay here. I wasn't sure. That went through the middle. Yeah, it actually went right through, through the, the middle, through the legs of, of Cooper Vest at first. So he got nutmegged, did <laughs> Vest at first base, and that was ripped into right field on the ground. The right fielder Gamble, a slight bobble of the ball, allowing Patasco to get to second easily. So a stand-up double, back-to-back doubles here in the fourth inning. We're tied up at one. That's a chopper. Shortstop ranges over to second base. Pirouettes and fires to first. Nice play by Brock Watkins coming all the way from short. Cuts across second. Makes really the grab in kind of short center almost. And then wheel and fire to get the hitter, and the runner will advance to third base on the ground out. Yeah, and you really need a strikeout right here to keep this game tied. So Patasco advancing on the ground out, 6-3 the ground out by Sam Brown, bringing up Jake Sukata. So it'll, it'll, it'll say the shortstop made the throw, but he made the throw from where a second baseman might norm, would normally be playing. Greenfield's playing in, in right now, trying to take away a run. So runner on third, Patasco, and that's fouled back into the screen. We're tied up at one here in the top of the fourth. One run on two hits for Portland, one run on two hits for BYU. And the Kooks have a second error, so I presume they gave yeah, an they error to Cole error, Gamble. Yeah. No, the error was to... Oh, they get to Vest? I'm not sure who they gave it to. Hmm. I think it was to Vest. Saying he should. Yeah. Yep. So they're saying the Vest could have had that yeah. Ball that ended up as a double. It goes not as a double, but goes as a Usually when e a ball goes between three. your legs as a fielder, <laughs> you should make that play. No. It was hit hard, but it's still one of those plays that you got to make. So we'll, we'll not go as a double. We'll go as an E3, putting the hitter Patascal at second. He's since advanced to third on the ground out by Sam Brown moments ago. Jake Sukata looking at the 0-2, by the way. The 0-2 with one out here in the top of the fourth. And again, fouled back, so Sukata staying alive. Fouls off consecutive pitches. Back to back to back pitches. 0 2 with one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Cougs look to minimize the damage here. Runner at third is Ben Pataskal. So the Cougs have two fielding errors in this game an E5 in the first and an E3 in the fourth. Easton Walker, another foul back into the screen. Walker delivering to Jake Sukata. Sukata. Fly out to center in the second. BYU scored one on the bottom of the first. The Pilots have one across here in the top of the fourth and one out. Two strikes to Sukata. Easton Walker, three Ks on the night. See if he has a strikeout pitch here with one out. Yeah, he needs one right here. The mound in shadow. Ooh! Ducking in the batter's box is Sukata. It's a good thing he's not an extremely tall player because wow. that would have taken off his head. So that got away from Easton, and that went behind the head and above the head of Jake Sukata. So one and two now.
The one two outside for ball two. Runner at third is Pataskal. In the box is Sukata. One out, one on. Top four. Tied at one. And Sukata. Another one. Grounds it off the glove of Cooper Vest. That'll be another error, and Sukata thought about going for two as that ball trickles into right field. Brought home is Pataskal. He scores to make it 2-1 Portland, and Cooper Vest will be charged with two errors here in the top of the fourth, one on a ball that went between his legs and one on a ball that goes off of his glove. Grounder to first that Vest could not handle cleanly. It trickled off his glove into short right. Sukata stayed at first, but the runner from third was brought home in Pataskal. So Portland with two runs across in an inning with two BYU errors and both on the first baseman. Yeah, and that, that first one was a tough play in a way, but that one was a ball that he should have gotten right at him. The, the runner at third wasn't breaking, and so he would have been able to get the out at first and keep the runner there. But uh, because of the error, they scored another run. So 2-1 Portland in the top of the fourth, one out. Briley Knight in the box. No. Just one ball, right? So ball one to Briley Knight. Runner on first is Sukata. Throwing back to first is Easton Walker. 1-0. Oh with one out here in the top of the fourth. Portland's gotten two across to go ahead by one. Briley Knight grounded out 6-3 in the second. Runner on here. Inside ball gets away from catcher Joshua Cowden, allowing Sukata to advance. So the Cooks having a tough time in the field here in the top of the fourth and runner in the scoring position. Two and zero, runner at second now. Sukata two one Portland, two runs, two hits for the Pilots. One run, two hits for BYU. Three errors against the Cougs here in the top of the fourth. Walker kicks and fires, and that's all three. So Easton gets behind three and zero to the hitter Briley Knight. Knight now four for his last twenty three. This is Easton's, I think, fourth consecutive start now that we've had at least two errors when he pitches. And so he's a contact guy. He's not a big strikeout guy. You've got to make plays behind him. And so far when he's pitching, we're not doing that right now. The 3-0. And taking and taking ball four is Knight. And so it'll be a runner at first. Briley Knight on the base on balls. The runner at Sukata stays at second, having advanced on a wild pitch. Or pass ball. Not sure how they judged it earlier in this inning. And we're going to see pitching coach Michael Bradshaw come on out and join Joshua Cowden in a conference on the mound with Easton Walker. It's unfortunate. Um, Easton hasn't been getting necessarily the run or the fielding support that a pitcher of his caliber could really benefit from. Yeah, I mean, that's the, uh, it's so frustrating to see that. For some reason, it's like, hey, when, you're, when your guy's on the hill, you usually play your best for him. But for some reason this year, when he's on the hill... You know, I don't know what it is, but defensively we haven't played great, and offensively we haven't scored a ton of runs for them. And and hey, when you're when you're facing their best pitcher on a Thursday night, you're you're going to have those tight pitcher duels. But uh, the one thing you can control, and that is is playing catch and, and and making simple plays. And defensively, we haven't done that for him the last few starts. And that's the frustrating thing, because then he has to feel like he has to do everything, mm. which that's not who he is. You know, he's a he's a ground ball, fly ball guy. Next hitter for Portland, the catcher Hunter Montgomery struck out in the second, and that's strike one to Montgomery. Swinging strikeout for the Pilots' strikeout leader coming into this game. And Montgomery added one more K to his tally in the third. I said second, third inning was his strikeout and his only plate appearance. The 0-1 with one out here in the top of the fourth. Portland's plated two and now lead 2-1. to Sukata at second, Knight at first. 
That's hit in the air. Foul down the first baseline. Roll across the road. Now he just needs to get a ground ball right here. Get a ground ball to the infield. Turn a double play. Get out of this inning. BYU's turned 13 double plays on the year. Same number as the opposition. Hunter Montgomery waves the bat over his right shoulder. Righty hitter, righty thrower here. Walker on the hill. Easton. The wind up and delivery. And that's foul tip back to the screen. Stay 0-2 with one out here in the top of the fourth. BYU scored one in the bottom of the first. Portland with two here in the fourth. And the lead is 2-1 for the Pilots. The 0-2, one gone here. Top four. Two runs on two hits for the Pilots. They benefited from three BYU fielding errors. Outside for ball one, one and two. Yeah, both earns, both runs this inning will be unearned yep. because of the two errors. And indeed, Easton's total this year of runs allowed is now up to 16. I beg your pardon, it's now up to 20, but only seven of the 20 have been have been earned runs. So that's, pr- that's a pretty yeah, sizable really is, yeah. disparity there between runs and the ones that are earned. Mm. 13 unearned to 7 earned runs. Good pitch. And that's a punch out, caught looking. So swinging in the third and looking in the fourth, Montgomery is retired, and that's two out here in the top of the fourth. Yeah, and Easton needed that, and he's got to find a way right now to get an out and just minimize this to two because in his last couple of starts, those errors have turned into five runs. And so five quick runs that inning alone. And so we need uh, we need to get out of this with just the two runs and keep this game close and give our offense a chance to come back. Two out, two on. Runner in scoring position. Sukata at second. Knight is at first. Walker gets a chopper to second. Handle cleanly scooped to short. Good job. And a step on the bag from Proc- Brock Watkins gets BYU out of the inning. So after three and a half, it is Portland two and BYU one. Cooks come to bat in the bottom of the fourth after we tell you the Pilots get uh, two runs across on one hit. There were two errors and two left on. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Leading off the bottom of the fourth for BYU, jersey number four, the second baseman. It'll be an up hitter, Andrew Pintar. Pintar singled BYU's one run home in the first inning. Brought home Cooper Vest, who had reached on a double in the first. That was BYU's one run to make it one nothing. Portland two runs, top of the fourth. We're now 2-1, bottom four. Pilots in front. That's one and one now to Andrew Pintar. When I And I feel for Cooper Vest right now because he had those two big errors that last inning, and he's a really good defensive first baseman. And he, he plays the game so hard in the right way, and you hate to see that happen to him because he's never had it happen to him as a, as a freshman. Swinging strike to one and two. Cooper Vest, by the way, had come in two tonight, having handled 29 chances perfectly. He had not made an error at first base until tonight. Yeah, he's he's probably our best defensive first baseman, and so that's why seeing those, those mishaps are not normal. The one-two. Right-handed hitting Pintar. Chops it foul down the third baseline. It'll bounce to the BYU dugout. Stays one and two. None out here, bottom four. The starter remains in the game for Portland. Brett Gillis into the bottom of the fourth now. BYU run, run on two hits. There have been no Portland errors. Pilots two runs on two hits. And a fitting from three, BYU errors. Yeah, and we, we've got to attack his fastball tonight because when he gets to slider counts, that's where he's getting his strikeouts. He's His slider is so good tonight, Gillis. He's got it working big time running away from right-handers. Yep. And so you've got to be on time for his fastball so you don't get to that slider count. Two and two. That's outside for ball three. Outside that's, maybe low. Yeah, I mean, that's a slider right there yep. that he wants you to swing at. And Pintar did a really good job of taking that. So now with the full count, you you just battle. It was running away from Andrew and it yep. laid off. Full count here in the bottom of the fourth. Duke's down one. That's a chopped mm. foul. Did it get him? 
Coach Quick enough over there at third? I mean, he's used to that hot corner. That's where he played. Yeah, he was a third baseman here at BYU back in the day. Coach Mike Littlewood, a draft pick of the Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah, it did, it did get him on the back of the hill. Mm. Don't you, you don't expect that, Coach. <laughs> and that's a walk high and inside to Andrew Pintar. So Cougs have a base runner here in the bottom of the fourth. Pintar reaching for the second time in his many plate appearances. Single and an RBI in the first, and a base on balls here in the fourth. Brings to the plate Joshua Cowden, left-handed hitting Cowden against the right-handed throwing Brett Gillis. Popped up to the second baseman to end the first inning for BYU, an inning in which the Cougars scored one. They've got one on, and that runner at first is Andrew Pintar. Base on balls from Gillis. Ripped by Cowden to right. Right fielder going back, looking, and it is gone. That it's a, a home run that a for Joshua Cowden and the Cougs go back in front, three to two on a two-run shot. A great at bat by Pintar to take the walk, and then Cowden did not miss that fastball. It was basically over the tree there in right center. Big time swing, Josh Cowden. Two-run home run, and the Cougs take a three to two lead on our first Utah. Community Credit Union home run of the night brought to you by UCCU. We're getting a mortgage is seriously fast and super easy. Just fill out an easy application right on your phone or computer. Learn more at uccu.com slash seriously fast. And that one got out of here seriously fast. Yes, it did. Great job answering. And just foul down the third baseline. The next hitter, Austin Deming, steps in and rips one foul. But BYU on a two-run shot from Joshua Cowden. Go back in front, 3-2. Three, three runs on three hits for BYU. And the Cougs restake the lead. Yeah, you give up a two-spot, two spot, two earned runs, and you punch them right back and take the lead. It's exactly what you want to see your team do. Nicely done. Third home run of the year for Joshua Cowden. Tied for the team lead in that category. Swinging strike on pitch number two from Gillis. Three-way tie now, isn't it? Yep. With uh, Pintar and Gamble. Yep. And Cowden joins them. Three with three. Cougs have three runs and lead by one. The 0-2 now. Pitchers count. And punch out. So backwards K. Austin Deming strikes out for the second time in as many plate appearance, appearances. Swinging in the second and looking in the fourth. It brings Hunter Swap to the plate. Grounded out 1-3 in the second. Two-run home run from Joshua Cowden. With Andrew Pintar at first, having reached on the base on balls. The Cowden two-run jack. Puts BYU in front, 3-2. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Swap will chop that. The third baseman. Handled cleanly by Patasco. And the fire to Brown at first, and the side is retired. But the Cougs get a run on a hit. No errors, and none were left on. Two-run shot from Joshua Cowden. Makes it 3-2, BYU after four on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Did early. I did by one out. And a lash to right will drop just foul by Brock Watkins. We should be wanting to keep this inning going. BYU scored to make it 3-2. And the last out that I ended the inning on prematurely was actually out number two. So one and one with two gone here in the bottom of the fourth. We stay going with Brock Watkins in the box. Watkins struck out in the second and hits now in the fourth with a 1-1 count. So resetting things for you, BYU three and Portland two in the bottom of the fourth. Pilots get two in the top of the fourth. BYU in the bottom of the fourth. Also two. Two-run shot from Joshua Cowden. Puts BYU back in front. Swinging strike by Watkins goes to one and two. Yeah, and Brock needs to get back to hitting the ball the other way, trying to, he, his, his first swing he tried to, you know, hit it down the right field line. Get back to the middle opposite field approach, and that's when he's at his best. When he gets pull happy is when the strikeouts start to tally up. It's a 1-2 to Brock with two gone. For real, you're in the bottom of the fourth, and that's a swinging strikeout. Now it's done for real. We are through four complete. BYU 3, Portland 2 on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Top five, BYU three, Portland two. And leading off the Portland fifth, the DH, the number nine hitter, Ty Saunders. 
fielding fielding switch for BYU as Freddie Achikar is in at first base, sending Cooper Vest to left field. Hunter Swap, who had been in left field, will see his place in the order taken by Freddie Achikar. Easton Walker still on the mound for BYU. 1-1 goes to 2-1 to Saunders. I beg your pardon, Holcroft is batting for Portland to lead off the inning, not Saunders. Hmm. Just missed down there. So 3-1. and one. Fouled down the third baseline. Three and two now. Well, None out here in the top of the fifth. Well, Holcroft had a full count on his last time up when he singled into right field. Another foul ball down the third baseline. Holcroft grounding out the first. And that single in the third. One of two Portland hits. Two runs on two hits for the Pilots. Three on three for BYU. Reaches out and lines one to the shortstop. Brock Watkins catching it on the fly. And one gone here in the top of the fifth. Henry Mench will now hit. Number two hitter, the right fielder, Henry Mensch. Struck out looking in the first, flied out to right in the third. He hits now in the fifth with his team down one. Almost halfway done here at Miller Park. BYU three, Portland two. One out here in the top of the fifth. And that's line just foul. Right field line goes to 0-1. Yeah, inside out, that kind of a Der- Jer- Derek Jeter type swing right there. Almost kept that fair on the right field line. 64th pitch from Easton Walker tonight. Easton, two hits, two runs, neither one earned. He's issued one walk and four Ks. The 0-1. Strike two. 0-2 from Easton. Pitchers count to the hitter, Henry Mensch. Mensch coming in two tonight on a modest three-game hit streak. Low for ball one, with one gone here in the top of the fifth. BYU and Portland game one of three game set. Cook scored first, the Pilots scored the next two in the top of the fourth. Bottom four, Joshua Cowden, two run home run to put BYU back in front. That was a none out, two run shot. Brett Gillis then struck out two of the next three batters to get out of it with just two runs across. But BYU is back in front. Count goes to two and two with one out here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, and after you take the lead in a game like this, midway through, you've got to put down a shutdown inning. You need Easton to keep grinding for you. Inside, count goes full. So three straight balls after an 0-2 start to the at-bat for Henry Mensch. Mensch making his eighth start, just his tenth game played. The Pilots are playing their 28th game of the season, 14-13, and 13, including an 8-7 and seven mark on the road. Two-hopper. Watkins tried to backhand it. Goes off his glove into short left field. Yeah, good hit right there. Goes a hit off the shortstop's glove. Would have been a, would have been a very nice diving backhanded yeah. stab if Watkins had made it. Yeah, it would have been a tough play. He did everything he could to try to keep him front, to keep that in the infield. Just off the outstretch of his arm. So off the heel of his glove into short left field, the ball would roll, and reaching first base on the single is Henry Mensch. So Mensch on the single to short. And the Pilots have a base runner with one out here in the top of the fifth. Is that going to be the night for Easton Walker? It could be. I know Bryce is down in the pen, and that could have been a situation where Cowden was just taking a mound visit to, to give Bryce a little bit. His, his stuff flattening out, he was so good in the first couple innings. 
And uh, he's starting to flatten out a little bit. So conference on the mound now as Robinson and Nielsen warming up in the pen here in the top of the fifth and one out, one on. And we're going to see a pitching change. It appears that way. We'll take a break. We'll break for a minute. We'll come back and tell you who the new pitcher will be for BYU. Cougs three, pilots two, top five, and one out on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU pitching change brought to you by PZ Printing. PZ Printing, nothing inspires like print. And the next pitcher for BYU will be another right-hander, Bryce Robison. Robison making his 13th appearance, making him officially the busiest pitcher on the staff. He was already the leader in appearances at 12. Makes his 13th appearance. He made one start on the year. His ERA 3.81 and hitters... Adam for 255, their average against him. He's averaging roughly a strikeout per inning, 25 Ks and 26 innings pitched. So Easton Walker's night is done after four and a third. He gives up three runs, three hits, two runs. None of the runs were earned. And so Easton's earned run total stays at seven for the season. Yeah, and the one thing about Easton is, you know, Pitch count was starting to get up there. You could just tell that his stuff wasn't as good after that long inning last uh, last inning. Um, wasn't all his fault, but he was. You could tell he was starting to get a little bit tired out there with the way that his stuff wasn't working like it was early. And uh, you know, you want to win this game, and you just don't want to say, "Hey, you know, if your stuff isn't good, we're going to go to our best reliever right now," which Bryce has been the last few weeks. And, 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 and if you look at the statistics, you know, when teams face Easton the third time around, their averages go way up. Mm. It's, it's when he usually gives up his most hits later in his outings. So, so it was a 69-pitch outing for Easton, 47 strikes thrown of the 69. But it's Bryce Robinson's game now with BYU up 3-2. And the throwback to first with Henry Mench at first after a single. One out, top five, BYU three. And Portland two is our score. Portland coming in having won three of four after having lost four of five. They've won back-to-back games coming into this one. Ooh, almost got it first. Freddie has the ball sneak out of his glove on the throwback to Mensch, diving back. Achikara placing Vest at first. Cooper Vest made his first two errors of the season from first base. Two of BYU's three errors on the night. Vest now plays in left field. And that's strike one on the outside edge. Oh, one with one out here, the top of the fifth. Well, Bryce did a nice job when he came in on Saturday in our victory. It was fantastic. He he, he overtook uh, Reed McLaughlin in, in our appearances that day. It was the first time in Reed's career, how about that, Greg, last weekend that he did not have an appearance. He usually has one to two a weekend, but uh, interesting was, weekend. And Saturday was only a two-pitcher day for yeah, BYU. Exactly. You love those days. Inside, ball one. One and one. One out here in the top of the fifth. BYU three in Portland two. And the first two days kind of got out, got away from us, so yeah. you didn't want to waste him in, in on those days, and you wanted to run for Saturday. But Bryce was so good that he had a multiple inning finish. The one one. Hit in the air to right. Right fielder Gamble going back and just in front of the track. Makes the catch. It'll send Mench back to first. Flying out to right is Chad Stevens. Stevens had reached safely in his first two appearances. E5 and a double. Scored Portland's first run of the night back in the fourth. So a fly out to Gamble in right. Bringing up Ben Pataskill, the third baseman for Portland. And that's a big out because Stevens is their guy. You mentioned it earlier how he, he leads in most of their categories. He's their veteran offensive leader, so getting that out for the second out is a big one. The throwback as Mench dives back safely. Sam Brown has a reach base, or beg your pardon, Ben Pataskill has reached base safely now in five consecutive games. Sam Brown is on deck. Two out, top five, BYU three, Portland two. Cook scored first. Pilots took a lead. BYU got it back on a two-run home run from Joshua Cowden. 
the first pitch delivery to Pataskul is ball one from Bryce Robison. Powder blue glove on the left hand of Robison. The righty kicks and fires. Chopper to third. Handled cleanly. And the fire to Freddie at first. And the Cougs are out of the inning. Peyton Cole handles the grounder with ease. And the retirement to first. And BYU's out of the top of the fifth. So we're halfway done here at Miller Park through four and a half. BYU three. And Portland two. No runs on a hit. No errors. There's one left on. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. First hit from the bottom of the fifth, Peyton Cole hits it in the air to left field. Left fielder Holcroft handles and one gone quickly, bottom five. BYU three, Portland two. And the number two hitter in the inning is the number one hitter in the order. Top of the order for Cole Gamble. Cole Gamble hitting leadoff tonight for the first time. Has gone strikeout, strikeout, swinging and swinging in the first and the third. Peyton Cole leads off the fifth with a fly out to left. Gamble now with one out. Digs in against Brett Gillis. Off-speed strike one. Well, he's getting himself into trouble today, Greg. Uh, Cole Gamble is he's taking a lot of pitches, and then he's swinging at uh, balls for strike three. He doesn't do that very often. Outside for ball one. One and one, one out here in the bottom of the fifth. And BYU's lead is one run. Cole Gamble came into tonight as BYU's RBI leader with 15 on the year. Ball two. Brett Gillis has gone all the way for Portland. Cougars are already on their second pitcher tonight. The 2-1. And that's fouled back for strike two. Two and two. With one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Portland's starting to have some. A left-hander down there warming up. The 2-2. Outside for ball three. Full count now to Cole Gamble. Coach Mike Littlewood talking about in pregame, and you know it as well. One thing Cole can do is take his walks. Yeah, he's done a really good job of that this year. You know, he struggled at times offensively. The average isn't going to show great, but, you know, he's got a three, 350 on base percentage. Turns on that one, and that's well fouled down the first baseline beyond the Portland bullpen. Stays full count with one out. At yeah, the bottom was, of the fifth. And that was the pitch right there. He got a hanging slider. Hittable, and he was just a little out front on it. Full count delivery. Chopper to first. Low hop handled by Brown. Sam Brown stepping on the bag to retire the second batter of the bottom of the fifth for BYU. So two up, two down on the gamble ground out. Unassisted put out by the first baseman, Sam Brown. Cooper Vest doubled and scored in the first and reached on a base on balls in the third. So one for one with a run scored and a walk. Righty pitcher, lefty hitter. Cooper Vesk uh, made his third consecutive start at first base and has since been moved to left field in this game. Two errors committed at first by Coop, his first two of the season. Pitch gets away from catcher Hunter Montgomery. One and one with two out here in the top, bottom of the fifth. BYU three in Portland two. Coop's looking to get back to 500 against right-handed starters on the season. Have yet to beat a lefty. Yeah, let's not talk about that stat. Let's yeah. forget that one. <laughs> Was it 0-5 now? 0-5 against lefties, yeah. yeah. 
but they'll be dead even if they can get the win here tonight. And that's Chopper foul down the first baseline into the facing of the Portland dugout. One and two with two out here in the bottom of the fifth. Record will be 10 and 10 against right-handers should the Cougs hold on for tonight's win. That's a swinging strike that gets away from the catcher with first base open. Fire to first, and that will do it. So the strikeout throw to first, and the inning is over. So we're through five complete, and for BYU, no runs and no hits, no errors, none were left on. BYU 3, Portland 2 after five complete on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Sam Brown leads off the Portland 6th. And swings through that offering from Bryce Robison. The 0-1 to Brown. Brown flied out to left in the second. Grounded out shortstop to first base in the fourth. Hits now in the sixth. BYU 3, Portland 2. Gets away from Bryce for ball one. Lefty, lefty, lefty. The first three hitters due up for Portland here in the sixth against the right-handed hurler Bryce Robison. Easton Walker went four and a third, pitched 69, through th- uh, 69 pitches before being replaced. That's strike. One, two, called strike to Brown. Well, an equalizer, the, the right, righty on lefty matchup that Bryce has here is a changeup. He likes to throw his changeup right here, running away to left-handers when it gets ahead in the count. Chopped over the head of the pitcher, collected by the shortstop, and the fire from Watkins to Achikar. Gets Brown at first, one out here at the top of the sixth. Nicely done right there. That was a little overshift there. A kind of exotic shift. Peyton actually left third base wide open and was actually hanging out over the bag. And so Watkins had to come and take that ball from Peyton Cole to get that first out of the inning. And the second 6-3 ground out in a row for Sam Brown. Jake Sukata, the second baseman, number seven hitter, number two hitter in the inning, digs in. And that's lined to right center for a single, sharp single will send Sukata to first, and he reaches on an E3 last time and a single to center this time. Yeah, he's a good hitter. Fastball down the middle. He took a really good swing on that and just hit it right back up the middle. So Sukata at first, one out, one on, top six, one run lead for BYU. Briley Knight, the left-handed hitting center fielder, is next up for the Pilots. 6-3 ground out and a base on balls in the fourth. He was stranded there. One out, top six. Throw back to first. Sukata back safely. The half square by Briley Knight. Ends up in a called strike, the 0-1 with one out here in the top of the sixth. BYU three and Portland two, our score. BYU scored first. Portland the next two. BYU the last two. The last two coming on a two-run shot to right from Joshua Cowden. Got him out in front of that one for a swinging strike two. So the 0-2 now for Bryce Robison. Pitchers count against Knight. Yeah, and there's that uh, changeup he likes to throw to left-handers. Or Bryce wants to go on the 0-2 with one out. And again. Right back to it. Yep. Good pitch. Swung through the change, and that's a strikeout for Bryce Robison. So Knight is the second out in the top of the sixth for Portland, bringing up Hunter Montgomery. The Portland catcher's gone swinging strikeout in the third, swinging strikeout in the fourth. And he follows a guy who just struck out swinging. Two out here, top six. Runner at first is Sukata, reaching on a single to right center. It's what you do after you give up the hit. The next batter is where it really makes you as a pitcher, Greg. You know, when when you go up there and you give up a hit and then the next batter gets another hit, then all of a sudden you get yourself in trouble. But if you can get a quick out right after a hit, now all of a sudden it's like, okay, you you shut down their momentum a little bit and, and make it to where they have to have, you know, an extra base hit or a long ball to score that run for first. First pitch from Robinson Montgomery, high and outside for ball one. The 1-0 with two out. Runner on first. 
That's outside low. Skip to Cowden. Runner off first. Got back. As Cowden threw to Freddie and getting back a little tardy was Sukata. But yeah. He's back safely. He, he, got, he was dancing a little bit. And at first, uh, Cowden wasn't sure if he wanted to throw it to second or right to first. But uh, decided to throw it to first. Just not in time. It's actually a smart play there because if he throws it right to first originally, then Sukata probably just keeps going to second. So that was a tough play to make. Just keep him at first and, and try to go get the hitter. The 2-0 now coming to Montgomery. Sukata off first. It's a swing and strike from Hunter Montgomery. Well, the Cougs are playing another shift here. You got Andrew Pintar playing right over the second base bag. So yeah. nobody is on the right side of the field except for Freddie, who's on first base. So, you know, if Montgomery is a big-time pull guy, he likes to hit middle pull. Yeah, the four holes half the diamond right now. And that's line to right coming in and making the catch on the run is Cole Gamble. So Gamble secures the third out. There was a single, no runs, one hit, no errors. One was left on through five and a half. It is BYU 3 in Portland, 2 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. New pitcher for Portland here in the bottom of the sixth inning is Caleb Franzen. The left-hander replaces Brett Gillis. Gillis went five complete, gave up three hits, three runs. They were all earned. Two bases on balls, eight strikeouts for Gillis. In his five innings of work, he threw 81 pitches. Did Gillis 54 of them, four strikes. Caleb Franzen making his ninth appearance. He has three starts on the year. His record's 0-2 on the season. His ERA is 3.07. And batters are hitting 202 against him. Doesn't give up a lot of walks. He's about a strikeout per inning. So 25 Ks in 29 and a third innings of work and only six bases on balls issued by Franzen on the year. So the southpaw facing the left-handed hitting Mitch McIntyre to begin the bottom of the sixth for BYU. BYU three and Portland two. So a half square by Mitch. It's ball one. So BYU is going to lead after six innings. And the Cougs have not lost a game all year when leading through six. And a knock on wood right there, the, the wood counter that we have. See if they can keep that going here. Yep. Mitch looks at ball two. Francis Mitch wears that pitch. Mitch wears jersey number six. BYU's looking to keep a lead through six, which they will do, and BYU's six and oh when leading after six. Two oh. Chopper behind home plate. Two right. balls, one strike to McIntyre. Mitch on the night, uh, fly out to left in the first, and a swinging strikeout in the third. I felt bad for him his last, last at bat because he got down 0-2 on two pitches that when you watch the replay were outside. That makes it for a tough at bat, and then he chased for his third strike. And Franson's, strike two. Franson's funky, kind of cross body. Lefty, good velo up to 92 with, the, with a really good slider that he just threw right there. It's the called strike on the 80-mile-per-hour slider, 2-2 two and two to McIntyre. And swinging strikeout. So back-to-back Ks for Mitch. And the first at-bat for Caleb Franzen goes well from the Portland perspective. And that's strikeout number nine on the night for the Pilots. Nine Ks for the pilot staff tonight. Right-handed hitting Andrew Pintar against the lefty Franzen. That's outside away from Andrew for ball one. Run scoring single in the first and a base on balls in the fourth. So Andrew's reached safely in both of his plate appearances. Yeah, and that base on balls where he fell down 0-2 and worked it to a walk. And then Cowden was able to hit the two-run shot after that, so... The bunts fouled back for strike one. One and one, one out, bottom six. BYU three and Portland two. Yeah, Penny tried to push bunt that towards the second baseman. Left-handers fall off towards the third base side, so if you can push, if you can bunt the ball to their left side towards first base, it makes it tough for them to field those bunts. Swinging strike for strike two. Andrew with that uh, single in the first, but now hits in eight of his last 11 games. The 1-2. 
Chopped foul again. This one bounds out in front of home plate. Stays one and two with one out. Yeah, Franson's got good stuff. That's a three-pitch mix there. He's got the 83-mile-an-hour uh, changeup right there. He threw back-to-back -back pitches with the 92-mile-an-hour fastball and then that really good slider at 80 miles an hour. Spanish Fork's Andrew Pintar waits the one-two. That's outside for ball two. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. The game BYU leads three to two. This one's a grinder. Two runs, four hits for Portland. BYU three runs on three hits. And both Portland runs were unearned in the fourth. Count's been worked full. Three and two on the high ball. One out here in the top of the bottom of the sixth inning. BYU three and Portland two. Lefty Franzen, the full count delivery, and that's ripped right up the middle for a single to center on the ground. Andrew Pintar reaches at first, and the Cougs have a man on with one out here in the bottom of the sixth. Andrew Pintar has his second single of the night. Yeah, it's a really good at bat right there. It was down again, two, two strikes, and then came back to full count, and then got the fastball down the middle, and he just hit it right back up the middle for a one-out single. Cougs have their fourth hit of the night. Joshua Cowden. Next up for BYU, the big blast for Joshua in the fourth. A two-run shot that took a kick to Cougs from down 2-1 to up 3-2. Mm. Outside edge for strike one. Not the benefit of that one. Austin Deming due up next. Will be pinch hit for it would appear with Jacob Wilk warming in the on-deck circle. The 0-1 to Cowden. To the four-hole. Cut off in the four-hole. And the throw to second gets away from the shortstop. Oh, oh, yeah, good read, good read. Runner reached the third, first and third with one out. The second baseman handling a sharp shot through to second. The ball was not handled by the shortstop at second. And advancing all the way to third is Pintar. And reaching on the play is Cowden. Yeah, and the minute that was hit, I thought, hey, you're not going to get Pintar at second. You need to just get the out at first. But uh, threw in the ball, and uh, Stevens wasn't able to, to corral it, the low throw. Pintar did a really good job of reading that and getting to third and give us a chance to head on here. So a fielder's choice reach for Cowden. Yeah, fielder's choice, and then E4. E4 allowing Pintar to get to third. So Jacob Wilk now pinch hits for Austin Deming. Runners on the corners and one out here in the bottom of the six. BYU with a lead and looking for more here at Miller Park. Caleb Franzen kicks and fires for strike one. The called strike on Wilk. So Jacob Wilk digs in and again the Cougs lead by one but looking for more here. Runners first and third, one out, bottom six. Jacob hitting 233 on the year. Yeah, and this is where you need Jake just to say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to drive a ball in the outfield right here, fly ball in the outfield and get a run. Third on the team in RBI coming into the evening. The 0-1 to Wilk. Swinging strike. Strike two. 0-2 with one out. Runners on the corners. Pintar at third and Cowden at first. Yeah, back-to-back off-speed pitches to get ahead 0-2. Pitchers count. The pitcher now is the left-hander Caleb Franzen. Replaced Brett Gillis. Bottom six, BYU up one. Well outside for ball one. One and two, one out, bottom of the sixth inning. BYU will lead going into seven. The only question now is the margin. That's a big run there at third. This is a good Portland offense, a grinding offense that competes. It's a big run right there. We need to drive in. Freddie Achikar waits on deck. Wilk swinging strikeout. Uh, so Franzen gets Wilk, and that spot in the order is struck out every time at bat tonight. Deming swinging and looking, and now Wilk swinging. Yeah, change up down. Good pitch there that Wilk couldn't hold up on for strike three. And both outs of this inning have come via the K. And 
That's 10 strikeouts on the inning for Portland, on the evening for Portland uh, pitchers. Freddie Achikar, who came in in a switch that saw Vest go from first base to left field. Freddie now plays first, and he took Hunter Swap's spot in the batting order. The order is seven, and Freddie Achikar steps in, looks at 0-1 now from Caleb Franzen. Runners on the corners for the Cougs. Two out, bottom six, 3-2, the BYU lead. Freddie held back. Runner bluff saying now goes, and he'll advance. Cowden will end up at second. Yeah, Cowden's going to get a stolen base on that. So stolen base for Joshua, second and third, two out, and one and one the count. And now you need the senior graduate transfer, Achikar, who's had some big hits early in the season, been struggling of late. Find a way here to drive in some runs. Joshua's first stolen base of the year. Freddie looks at strike two. So now it's a one and two count, two out, two on here in the bottom yeah, of the sixth. And you know he's going to go with that slider away. So sit, sit that way. Look for that pitch and just drive in the six hole and drive in some runs. Slider from the lefty will go away from the left-handed hitting, Freddie Achikar. One and two here with two out in a one-run game. And swinging strikeout. Caleb Franzen K's all three of the outs in the bottom of the sixth. There was a single, and there was an error. And there were two on by the end of the inning, but no one crosses. And after six complete, BYU 3, Portland 2 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.